Hello, I'm Casey Schaffler. I'm going to be talking, talking a bit about uh, some work we're doing with regard to a uh, library for LSM, uh, LSM uh, using applications. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I've been doing uh, operating systems for a long time. I've been doing security for a long time. I'm the author of the SMAC uh, Linux security module. I'm currently working on LSM infrastructure primarily, and I'm a hobbyist which means I get to do it when I want to and under what conditions I want to. So we can't really talk about a library for dealing with Linux security modules until we've actually talked a little bit about Linux security modules. So we'll just dive into this a, a, a bit here. Uh, Linux security modules provide additional restrictions uh, to, to the normal system policies. Now, they've been around for long enough that a lot of us think of those as normal system policies these days. But it really uh, is an attempt to, to have a general mechanism for having additional, yeah, additional controls. And traditionally, we've used this was initially mandatory access control was, was where it was initially focused. Uh, today, though, we're using it for sandboxes. And we're doing some hardening work. And Yama is a good example of some of the hardening we've done with it. Uh, sandboxes, we've got landlocked. And uh, for mandatory access control, SE Linux, AppArmor, and AppArmor is now going to be doing some sandboxing too. So it, we've got a good collection here of additional restrictions that you can have with the normal system policies. Now, some, sometimes when you want to do something different, or a, you, know, you need to introduce some additional attributes. Uh, if you're doing mandatory access control, for example, you might want to have a label on a file. Uh, if you're doing integrity measurements, you might want to have a hash of some sort associated with, with, a, with a file or a process. So there are all kinds of attributes you could add. Um, Timestamps, again, you know, all, all kinds of things. Um, and you're going to put those attributes on all kinds of things. You're going to put them on processes, files. Uh, other system objects and things that are not objects, uh, port number, uh, ports, for example, you might want to put a security label on a port or do an integrity measurement on a tape drive for some reason. Um, but there are all kinds of attributes you might want to put on that are specific to your, your security module. And sometimes you're going to want to access those. So if you want to see uh, previous talk, we had ps-z to tell you the attributes on a process. Well, you might want to do that for administration purposes. Um, if it's a sandbox, you might want to allow your user to modify those attributes. If uh, you're a program like uh, Dbus, you might want to look at some of these attributes to decide whether to deliver messages from you know, one process to another. So there are all kinds of things that you might want to use these, this information for, and you might want to get, get it into user space, and you need a way to do that. Now, traditionally, back in the bad old days, before 6.8, um, you do the administration via special file system entries. Um, SE Linux FS, Mac FS, Security FS, I think all are all mechanisms you can use to administer the LSM. So uh, examples here, you can see that. Um, well, we can use security FS to, to look at uh, the list of security modules on the system, and use uh, SMAC FS to look at the one of the network network configuration values. We can also do process attribute manipulation and identification um, using proc self adder. Um, there are several entries here. Some LSMs use all of them. Some, some use one, one of them. Some use none of them. Uh, so we can look at, um, look at the information about my current process, looking at these interfaces. And that's fine if you're in a shell script, but it's really not very convenient for an application to use. So uh, very recently, we added LSM system calls. 
Um, these are, are, are relatively new. And, but the problem we've got with these is they're not in the library anywhere. Uh, we have three system calls. One will list the security modules that are available on the system. Uh, interesting fact right here, I don't have a slide for it, which I probably should, is that we introduced the whole notion of having an LSM ID, which is a numeric value, which identifies uh, the security module in addition to the name. And this makes the interfaces a whole lot easier. You don't like interfaces where you have to pass two strings. The name and the value, that's really inconvenient because either <laughs> you end up parsing it and parsing is bad. So we've introduced um, LSM IDs. Uh, another system call will get, the at get an attribute for the current process and it will, you, you can either tell it to just give me one of them or you know, just give me the first one or you know, give me the, the one I've specified or you'll get, get the whole list of all, all of the attributes with that ID that are associated with that process. So if you have, you have App Armor and SE Linux at the same time, um, you'll get two entries, one for each and they'll be identified so you can know what to do with them. You can also set an attribute, and uh, this has interesting aspects to it because, of course, each LSM may have its own policies regarding whether you can or can't set, set this attribute, set an attribute. And again, not all LSMs support all attributes. But these are system calls. We, you know, they're not in libc anywhere. They're not in any library anywhere. So we need to have a library for them. How about libLSM? And that's what we're working on right now, so that we can do this. Now, there are a lot of things you're going to want to do in an application with the security module attributes. Uh, you're going to want to read them. You might want to print them. You might want to do all kinds of things with them. So we want to make it easy to do this. Not so easy that everybody just, you know, that it just does it for you. But well, we want to actually make it, make it pretty easy. So we want to do a few things allow you to do a few things. One of the first things we want to do um, is to manipulate the LSM context structure. Now, the LSM context structure is the, the fundamental unit of data that, these are, that um, the get and set operations are going to use. Rather than having multiple parameters, um, which makes it really difficult to return more than one, um, for example, or to specify more than one. So uh, this is the basic structure. We've got IDs, flags, lengths, lengths of various sorts, and then the actual attribute value itself. Um, this structure is it's not difficult to deal with, but boy, it would be really nice if I've got a list of them. I would like to be able to get to the next one in the list. So I'm going to have a function here, LSM context next which is really just going to be adding the length of the, of the current value um, and returning a pointer to the next one. Some people are afraid of doing pointer, pointer arithmetic on their own. And based on some of the casting I've seen when people try to do this, I can sure understand why they're afraid of it. Um, so we want to have a function to do that. Uh, we also want to have a function to fill the buffer. Uh, one of the reasons for this is that we want the LSM context to be aligned and calculating the alignment isn't necessarily obvious. So we'll just uh, create the length properly rather than having the, the user specify it when they're, when they're filling the buffer. That makes it pretty easy. So I mentioned a little bit earlier that we have ID mappings. Uh, so if you have an L, a, a numeric ID, you'll sometimes want the name if you're going to print it. Um, if you're interpreting a command line, you probably want somebody to specify the security module by name rather than number because nobody really wants to remember that SE Linux is uh, LSM number 100 or that uh, App Armor is 102. Uh, just, just hard to, to do that. So you want to have a function to do that. So have a function LSM ID to name. Uh, it's going to map the the uh, an ID and give you give you back the pointer to the name. If you have a name, 
you know, you're going to want to get an ID from name, so you have the name, it'll give you the ID. You don't have to remember the numbers anymore. Uh, everybody's a lot happier. Now, we also have to have IDs for our attributes. Uh, so the attributes we currently have are mapped directly to the, the entries in proc self adder. So there are six entries there, so we have six IDs. No reason we couldn't have more. Um, again, not all LSMs support all of these IDs. But just like with the LSM IDs, you want to have it, be able to map it back and forth. Again, very, pretty simple. Now, everything, everything here is so far really pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, but if we're going to have a library, we're going to want it to work everywhere because we don't want somebody saying in their, in their application, if I have a kernel after 6.8, then I'm going to be able to get this information. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go do a whole bunch of stuff. So we want to do some LSM system, system call emulation. So we want to be able to go look in the traditional places and pretend we're implementing where we're, you ran the system call when the system call is not there. So we're going to have some, some new functions for that, of course. Uh, the older kernels aren't supporting the system calls, so we're going to have, have some functions. Uh, LSM get self adder proc, which is going to get it from proc. Uh, LSM set self adder proc, and so forth. So that you're at, you, you don't code your application to use the proc interfaces, you code your your application to use the, the system calls. And if you don't have the system calls, you get the values anyway. Now, slash proc has some issues. Um, one of them is that you don't know which LSM is necessarily giving you the value if you look at proc at or current, proc self at or current. Uh, this is my bad. Um, I made the mistake, mistake here. But we, we started looking at ways to address this, and one of the ways we said, well, let's put a subdirectory in for each of the LSMs. And that'll, that'll make it easy. You, you, if you know you're looking for, for an SE Linux, you look in SE Linux, and so forth. So we got, got a subdirectory for SmackIn in version 5, 5.0, AppArmor in 5.8, uh, and the SE Linux maintainers have declined to uh, have a subdirectory. So we're working with this. Uh, it, makes, it does make the emulation just a little bit more, a little bit trickier. Um, current implementation that we have, we say for SMAC, we're going to look in the subdirectory. For AppArmor, we're going to look in the subdirectory. And we're going to assume that what's in, um, it's not in the subdirectory. That's the SE Linux one. And if you don't have SE Linux, then we have to figure out based on who comes first, which one it's going to be. But we don't, if it's not SE Linux, we don't care because we have a subdirectory we can look in. Uh, PROC also has some privilege issues. Um, while, well, the reading is, is pretty consistent. Um, updating entries, setting attributes, isn't consistent and uh, it's not always the same as with uh, set proc adder. And it couldn't be policy dependent. So you can have SE Linux policy that doesn't allow you to update that entry. You can have SMAC policy doesn't allow you to update that entry. You can have SMAC policy that doesn't allow you to update the SE Linux entry. Um, you can have SE, so the emulation isn't going to be perfect. It's going to be very, very close to similar, but you're not going to be able to have it, have it be identical. And that's a, a problem with emulation. This, again, this is one of the reasons why we went with the system calls, was so we could have a, cons a more consistent interface, more consistent behavior. We're going to have to do some things on the systems to actually make use of this now because we don't have a whole lot of user space that's aware of the fact that you might have multiple security modules. 
you know, one of the aspects of security modules we really like like to have is that, you know, applications don't really care what the policy, what what LSM it's got under it. You know, it's going to be some system call behavior might be a little bit different, but uh, applications are supposed to be able to handle that. There are some uh, applications, however, that actually do depend on the security module that do have to be aware of it. Um, in fact, on Fedora 39, there are 93 packages with SE Linux in the name and 157 that depend on libse Linux. That's a lot more than I expected. Um, with Ubuntu, there are 16 with AppArmor in the name and 38 that are depending on libAppArmor. And there's virtually no overlap. So if you're going to look at this and say, well, I want to make some, you know, make, make my, my distribution LSM agnostic, you have a lot of work to do. Uh, just determining which of these actually have, have issues <coughs> is, is going to be, be a bit tricky. Now, some, you know, most of these things you're probably not going to have to do, do much with, but on occasion, um, you're going to have something that's really going to be stand out as, as a whopper. And of course, I'm talking about system D. Uh, system D is really very good about being aware of Linux security modules. It does a whole lot of things to su in support of the various security modules and their various behaviors. So clearly it needs attention. Um, but it probably isn't going to need more than a few tweaks. Now, one thing that is going to have to change is this line of code that's actually actually in is in uh, system D 234, where there's an assertion that you're not running SC Linux and Smack at the same time. Uh, this caused me a considerable amount of vexation during testing on, on module stacking, where I was like, why won't system D come up? Oh, because it says this is a bad state. And it, it turns out there's actually an easy fix for that. And in general, looking, looking at uh, applications, there are easy fixes for most of the things that they're doing that are, that are uh, at security module specific. Um, ID-Z, for example, doesn't need to be testing to see if it's got SE Linux enabled. Because it refuses to, to, to tell you the attribute values if you don't have SE Linux enabled, even though it could. Yeah. Um, we want to have a few simple commands that are going to map direct, essentially directly to the system calls uh, so that you can put them into your shell scripts. Uh, these are, are tentative names for it. Uh, having played with it a little bit, underscores and program names are not convenient, so that'll probably get changed at some point. Another aspect of user space that we have to have to deal with, logging. All right. Most of the logging we're, we're doing is, is pretty, pretty um, independent of what security module you have, but audit records, are an exception. Um, if an audit, an audit record, if you've got multiple security modules that have attributes, need to pres need to pres produce them in such a way that you can get all of the attributes, not just the you know, the first one, or um, in the current state, the only one. So we need to have a new audit audit record type uh, to to explain the attribute contents of, of the various um, LSMs. Uh, that means new, you know, new audit record type, new, uh, new audit parsing. Um, it's, it's not difficult, it's known technology, but it's just something that's gonna be, gonna be different here. Uh, we don't have to do anything in, in a library for this. We just have to do that in the audit, in the audit code. So we got a bunch of things we still have to do. Um, the libLSM 
current, current Im implementation of it is still pretty basic. Uh, but there are still, again, there are things more to do. One of them uh, is the peer context. Right now, there, there are two mechanisms, uh, SO PeerSec and SCM Security, where you can get you know, the value for um, your peer on a network connection, but you can only get one. And we'd like to provide a, an LSM context instead. That way you can do it if you've got one, if you've got more than one. We also probably want to have functions for file attributes. So we'd like to be able to say, give me the, attri get, get me the attributes of on this file and give me all of them. Uh, setting them as well, rather than you know, dealing with the, the current, well, what you have to do currently is you have to go in and uh, deal with the extended attributes directly. Um, dealing with extended attributes is not, con not very convenient. So if we have this, then we can just do, do one thing uh, and get that through. So to sum things up, now we've got LSM system calls now. We need to have a, have a way to get at them. So we need to provide a library to do that. It'll help us get away from using slash proc. Um, ideally, it'll help us get away from having to know the gory details of how things are implemented with um, extended attributes. And it should, should, all, should make the entire process of moving applications so that they can be LSM agnostic, um, so that they can work with all LSMs rather than one in particular, make that a little bit easier. Uh, but it's a balancing act. If you want to, you know, we're going to you know, put out put out a fairly simple library initially, uh, get some people using it, and then of course they will say, well, why don't you do this in, as well? At which point we say, well, okay, we'll do that. Um, ex extend it out, make make it a little better. Or we could wait for everybody to start screaming and and say and doing their own implementations. Uh, being proactive, I think, is, is a good approach. Uh, we can see what happens, uh, carry it forward, and uh, get some good interfaces out there uh, so people will actually start thinking in terms of doing their applications for LSMs as opposed to for SE Linux or for AppArmor or for SMAC. And that's really all I've got to say about it. I've got a URL here um, for the, the current Git. It's not very big, but it has a, f has a few things, a few ideas in it. It's got, you've got man pages. I haven't done a man page in a long time. That's so uh, I think that's about all I've got. So uh, questions?